The U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Vernon Walters, as reported, will go to Syria tomorrow on a mission to try to free American hostages in Lebanon. The nine Americans may be going through the most dangerous hours of their long captivity, trapped by fierce street fighting between pro-Syrian forces and the pro-Iranian radicals who hold them captive. From London, Bill McLaughlin reports. America's hostages have become pawns in the battle for military supremacy in Beirut's southern slums. Most of the nine Americans, along with more than a dozen other foreign hostages, are being held by Hezbollah, the extreme Lebanese Shiite faction loyal to Iran. And they're being held somewhere in the battle zone. For two weeks now, Hezbollah has been pushing Amal, the pro-Syrian militia, street by street out of the slums. There is also a real fight between the Syrians and the Iranians over who is the senior partner in the affairs of Beirut and in the affairs of Lebanon. Syria has been trying to negotiate a peaceful compromise with Iran. The two are allies, but the alliance now seems near the breaking point. Iran has warned Syria to keep out of the Hezbollah stronghold and not try to rescue the hostages. Mideast experts say Iran is still trying to sell the hostages for a high price. They have obtained concessions from the Americans, they've obtained weapons from the Americans, they've obtained money from the Germans, they've obtained money and, and, and other concessions from the French. So in the scheme of things, in the scheme of things, for the Iranians and for the protégés in Lebanon, the holding of hostages in the southern slums is still not a bad business. Today, President Reagan said the U.S. would do all it could to free the hostages, but it wouldn't pay for them. The government should take advantage of everything it can to get those people free. At the same time, we must recognize we can't do something in the form of ransom. Syria hasn't ordered its troops in yet, but sources in Beirut tonight say Syria's patience with Iran has almost run out. Bill McLaughlin, CBS News, London. Still ahead on the CBS Evening News, correspondent Richard Wagner on an explosion of anti-American violence in South Korea. And David Browning on a nightmare in the television dream factory. Negotiations were reported on track today in Panama, but proceeding slowly between U.S. diplomats and the indicted general, Manuel Noriega. President Reagan's aides insist they are not bothered by criticism of their plan to drop all drug smuggling indictments against Noriega in return for his promise to leave power and be quiet. President Reagan today gave public permission to George Bush to distance himself from some Reagan policies. He had a spokesman do that, but Mr. Reagan himself also tried to play down any real differences with Bush. This follows a change in Bush campaign tactics. The vice president began the change yesterday by saying he would not negotiate with drug dealers. Bush never mentioned President Reagan nor Panama's General Noriega by name. President Reagan today said he didn't see that as criticism or a break by Bush. I can see why the vice president said uh, what he said because the impression has been given based not on information from us but based on rumors and uh, news leaks and so forth that uh, we are in negotiation somehow over or with a, a participant in the, in the drug trade and all and uh, I think he was making his, himself plain that uh, you don't negotiate uh, with people of that kind with regard to their activity in, in drugs. While Mr. Reagan tried to minimize any difference with Bush, Bush campaign operatives reported he had earlier fanned out to spread word that it was indeed at least some separation from what the president has been doing. Today, there was a follow-up. Bush, for the first time, trying to indicate differences with Mr. Reagan on civil rights. Correspondent Bob Schieffer is covering the Bush turnabouts. Bush asked 30 black leaders to a closed-door meeting at his official residence today to tell them his administration would support many of their goals. He wants to demonstrate very, very clearly early on that his door is open to the civil rights leadership of this nation. Bush's aides are quite open about something else. He is also trying to distance himself from the Reagan administration's civil rights record, a record many blacks call deplorable. I think that uh, there's a degree here. You do not have to attack the administration, but you can clearly state we have to do better, and I think that that's the way he'll go about it. As a congressman, Bush was considered fairly liberal on civil rights, but blacks say his eight years in the Reagan administration have changed that. 
A recent CBS News New York Times poll showed only 8% of black voters hold favorable opinions of Bush. Since he's been vice president, uh, there's no public record that he's ever differed from the president, and the president's record has been, in our judgment, uh, anti-civil rights advancement. In California this week, as he has throughout the campaign, Bush concentrated on shoring up support among traditional white Republicans. But with a close race shaping up, he knows he must branch out. I think we have to reach out as best we can to all voting groups and made that point clear to a group of Hispanic leaders here today. Bush was clearly hurt with blacks when he supported the president's recent veto of legislation which would have strengthened anti-discrimination laws in publicly funded institutions. I think uh, there's too much there for George Bush to overcome. No meeting will cure that. Until recently, Bush seldom met with black voters, but this week in Los Angeles, he dropped in unexpectedly on a black family in Watts and will now schedule at least one stop in black communities every two weeks. Bush hopes to be in position to pick up black voters who might be disenchanted with the Democratic Party if Jesse Jackson does not wind up on the ticket. And CBS News learns the vice president is now pushing the administration to support pending legislation which would add new teeth to the fair housing law. One advisor told us the vice president wants to be on record in favor of this, just in case the White House decides down the line to oppose it. Bob Schieffer, CBS News, Washington. Follow-up to the finding of a 9mm bullet under a seat in the Jesse Jackson press plane in Fresno last night. The Secret Service now says the bullet was one of its own. Searchers today said they found the bodies of three men on the high slopes of 14,000-foot Mount Rainier in Washington State. Rescuers said the men missing since Saturday were roped together and apparently were victims of an avalanche on the highest mountain in the contiguous United States. The men, two from California and one from Washington State, were described as experienced climbers who set out to climb Mount Rainier a week and a half ago.